Hey there. Have you got your Tim Teeny? Yeah. Good. Now get ready for Talks with Tim. Tim Talks. All right. Here's that familiar noise, everybody. Happy day. It's Tim Talk. It's that time. If you don't have your Tim Teeny, I'll give you a second or just a second. Mm-hmm. And, and go get that Tim Teeny. This is a special Tim Teeny. I was being cautious and careful for the last couple episodes. Uh-huh. So this is much more flavorful. I really put some time and energy to it. So It's delicious. Ours is going to be really great. There's a lot of in there, including lemon juice. So oh, Fresh lemon juice? Fresh lemon juice. Ooh. Yeah. We've got premium ingredients this week. So happy day, Dan. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you doing? Great. I am very excited about this week's guest. I am very excited about this week's guest as well <laughs> not only is she a friend a client she is amazing this is jean ann cannon hi jean. hi jean hi tim hi dan so nice to be here thank nice you for, to have yeah you. thank you for taking that time you're welcome. so give us a brief um bio on you let's let the audience know what you're about and who Sh- you are sure sure um gosh you know, after college, I was in business, uh, selling computers, doctor's offices, and had a big light bulb moment. We had alcoholism in my family, went back to school, kind of to understand that, got a master's in counseling, worked for a couple different treatment centers, substance abuse, psych hospital, was in Chicago working with a group of therapists, then got married, moved back here, and started my private practice. So I've been doing that over 20 years, and now I'm doing my private practice full-time, both in person at my office here in Michigan City and online. Um, women's issues relate a lot of couples counseling, transitions, career, empty nest. In general, depression, anxiety. Uh, you know, it's interesting when people get stuck in transitions. A lot of, su- I, a lot of clients are successful men and women who have had something going on in their life that it just has kept them stuck. So they come in, see me. I'm also a certified coach, which is coaching is a little different than therapy. Therapy, you know, gets back to the reasons why sometimes where coaching is very, um, there's a model we follow and it's very um, behaviorally based where instead of getting into your family of history and all that, it's changing your thinking and getting better results quickly. So, yeah, that's a little bit of my practice, and I absolutely love it. And just because through my life, not only personally but professionally, you can see that you don't have to stay stuck. And uh, there's help out there, all kinds of help. And you're old school. I appreciate you as a client coming in because I always pick your professional brain, so I hope you appreciate that. I do. Um, But you're connecting by communicating, and you're face-to-face. That's so important now. And you're relatable, and I think everyone more than ever needs to be heard. So you have such a big role and you are making big difference, small differences. But um, I appreciate you coming because I really value that in my, we both deal with the public and in today's service industry, whatever that is, it's higher energy of emotions. Right. So we both in different levels, we still meet and hopefully make differences and listen and make changes with individuals. I do it with hair, which is an emotion. You do it with the health, which is an emotion. But with that, let's talk about emotions. Well, let's lighten it up because we're going to get heavy into this. Um, So with my profession, everyone thinks they're a hairdresser. So Jean Ann can. (laughs) (laughs) How does everyone cut their hair? And when they cut their hair, they come in and go, I just cut a little bit or I just cut here. Oh, Tim. Which makes me professionally need you as a therapist. There you go. (laughs) I'm a bad girl. I get crazy when I'm going out or something. Oh, I'll just take a little snip, snip. And then I have to cough it up when I see you. Oopsie. (laughs) Well, I'm so anal and everything's a plan and a purpose. And it's so funny. You're not alone. Uh, and there is a group called the Harry Situation. If you want to join it, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> it's a deal. I know, um, but I'm like, how, everyone says, "How did you know?" I'm like, "How do I know?" Right. Yeah. I say it every time I, I do it. I say to my family, "Tim mm-hmm. is going to kill me." And like you, they always say, "Well, I want it to grow." I'm like, "Yeah, I want it to grow t- as well." Can you right. Stop cutting. Right. Right. Oh, so let's funny. jump in this because this is going to sure. hopefully affect at least one, but many, um, with you being here. So, with that being said. Let's talk about depression and anxiety and the, mm-hmm. why it's more talked about than I think ever. Um, clients come in more than, than usual and all the time. 
So they come in. What does that really mean when someone says out loud and comfortably um, dealing with depression or anxiety? Right. Great question, Tim. You know, that's a million dollar question is someone says they're depressed or a child or a family member or a couple. I'm unhappy. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. And the big, you know, red flare is, oh, well, is that clinical depression? Is that clinical anxiety? How bad is this? My loved one, should I get concerned? And my answer to that really is, obviously, when someone says something like that, something is going on. Now, what you don't want to do is nothing. You ha- you should, in a healthy way, do something, and that means getting it checked out. Sometimes the first line of, you know, defense is going to your physician. You know, physically, is anything going on? And if it's a good doctor and holistic thinking, they'll say, hmm, what's going on emotionally? I love that now when I go to the doctor, a medical doctor, and they actually ask you about your psychiatric background. Yeah. I love that too. Dan? And then you didn't get used to get that as much. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm like, oh, thank goodness the world is changing. So to answer your question, Tim, is there are all different levels and severity of depression and anxiety. And I always say when someone comes to me and says either I'm experiencing this or a loved one or someone they know, if it's causing problems in your life and you've tried to fix it, so to speak, and it's not getting better or it continues to cause problems, that's when you should get it checked out. And, you know, what that r- raises is why do people not go get things checked out? Even physically, people don't get things checked out. You know, one, they're embarrassed. Uh, they don't think they have the time. Um, they, let's see, what else? They don't, uh, they think they can do it on their own. So the problem with that is year after year after year after year, things just compound themselves, and then it can take on a life of its own. So if you get it early and learn about it, it's the same thing with any substance abuse or addiction. You know, it's very complicated. It affects us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Spiritually, I mean by life purpose. Like when something's bothering us and we get up in the morning and it affects how we think about ourselves or our role in the world, whether how we relate to people or our work, and it's continuing to bother us. You know, there's a term called emotional intelligence. Sometimes people, if you grow up in a certain type of family where you think you should be able to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and get on with it, we think we should solve these things for ourselves. That's why I do what we do, because we can't solve things, myself included. We need outside intervention to help and support us and truly understand what's going on, how challenging is it, and what are the options to meet the goal of whatever the client has. It's not what I think the client should do. It's what they want. And that's my role is to help them get there. Well, I think you um, have to be one ready. But here, let me ask you this. Speaking on my own behalf, I don't go to the doctor. And uh, I really don't. And I believe positive is what positive does. So I, I'm blessed to not be sick. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, I don't want to know the, the no. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to, in my mind, create my own reality. I want to say I'm healthy sure. and be happy. So with that, um, and it's such a fine line to your point about how you're raised. Yes. That fine line about personal and private. Yes. And the mm-hmm. comfortability of should I go? The, being comfortable with that one and two you know i was raised not i but a lot of raised, people a lot of people raised don't we're all fine we're all perfect don't say anything no i don't want anyone to know our business you're fine you're, you know what i'm saying right and um and then you got the ones that are very you know talk open about everything sure open. so what do you yeah where's Where's Are that? you talking about like the match between the therapist and the client? Yeah. I, it's been a while since I knew anything about this, but Gina, correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. I think that was one of the leading indicators of success in, in uh, therapeutic situations was just that matchup. Is that right? Oh, great point. I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of good therapists. There are a lot of not so good therapists. There are different types of therapy. I, that's my first question when I get a new client is, have you been to therapy before and how was it? Was it good? Was it not good? Blah, blah, blah. And I talk about the fact that we're a partnership. And I also talk about the fact that there's different types of therapy. There are some that is very assertive, some that is middle ground, some that is very laid back. Well, very laid back, it's time and money, let's face it, therapy. It's emotional, it's, it's difficult, challenging at times. So 
I am in the middle where I kind of support the person by, you know, giving them, pushing them along a bit, but not to the point where it's extremely assertive. I have been to very assertive therapy in Chicago with a group, which is a whole nother <laughs> story. I loved it because they really pushed me hard. And I, that's what I wanted in that time of my life. We so, are our own worst enemies, yeah. including myself. I talk all myself all the time. Good, right. good, and different. Right. Um, occupation, your craft. How do you get someone just to, to be comfortable calling you or anyone yeah. and saying? Okay. And what I would say, is, that's, again, a great question, is you can call a therapist. I always say, for, for instance, sometimes people um, as a client will want to come to me because they know me or just the opposite. They know me, but no way will they come to me. I would never want to go to someone I know. I, as a therapist, I've not or gone to therapy. I've not known the person. So anyone is welcome to call me, and I'll tell them, this is what therapy can do for you, given the generality of whatever issue it is that you're struggling with. So then you kind of just chat, and then all of a sudden the person generally, if it's a good therapist, will make them comfortable enough because it's about trust, let's face it. Mm -hmm. And we there's an ethical code. If you know, no one knows who I see. My husband doesn't know any my friends, my family. No one, I wouldn't be in business if people knew who I saw. Right. So confidentially is totally there. But to answer your question, Tim, is you almost said you don't want to know the answer, so why should I go? Right. Well, y y when you go to a therapist, you are driving that boat. You, as a client, will say what you want to say and go as deep or not deep as you want to go. It's the the therapist's job to support you in getting whatever you want at the time. You know, at the time. Yeah. Sometimes you poke the bear, so to speak, <laughs> um, and figure out one problem. And then if the person needs, the client needs to wait to, to go deeper and deal with something else, there, that's their prerogative. So it's a really no... Um, no commitment, if you would, or you're not totally locked in once you start therapy. And therapy, you know, again, I do mine online and uh, in the office. It's up to the person about how often they want to go and how much they want to go. It sounds sure. like you look, give a lot of control to the client. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, that's how it should be. Share your thoughts with this, in, um, especially more with the youth. But mm -hmm. if you share anything with them, they feel like they're wronged. You know what I'm saying? To, giving them any kind of advice means mm -hmm. they're wronged or don't tell me because that means I'm, I, mm -hmm. yeah. like they're oversensitive. Yeah. So your yeah. question is, but yeah. see, as a therapist, I don't tell them what to do. Mm. What I do is help. I love that, by the way. Well, that, yeah. See, <laughs> sometimes people really don't even yeah. understand what no, therapy is. Ther therapy is not me giving advice. Therapy is that person coming to me, explaining what the problem is, which that in and of itself is can be kind of complex. Right. Um, I'm supporting them to understand what the real problem is. They might come in saying one thing, and it's a little bit different once they start talking. And then my goal is to help them reach the goals that they want. I don't tell them what they want. There's no way. And it, my personal views on anything are not appropriate. It's what they want. So that needs to be repeated. I think that's pretty powerful, and it. To know is to grow. I did not know that either. I, in my mind, thought you're going to tell me. Oh, never, never. Isn't that interesting. Yeah, that's I, I very that interesting. And yeah. if you think that, a lot of people think exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. So my job. You're I mean, gonna, I want you. I'm paying you to tell me. Right. Nope. But uh, you're, are, are you <laughs> are you also afraid though that when you get into it, when you when you say something in therapy to your therapist, who you trust, who's not going to tell you what's right or wrong, you're going to know when you say it out loud. Is that right or wrong for me, right? right? Which is part of bringing the light of day to stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but you can be afraid point. of that too. You can be afraid of saying, I don't want to admit my problems because I know what my problems are. If I say them out loud, I'm going to have to deal with them. Correct. You know? It, right. And so the skill of a good therapist is to support you in getting to the point where you're deciding what you want to do baby step by baby step, if you would. Yeah. You know, a gentle, trusting, understanding, not only trusting of the client, of the therapist, but the, the client trusting themselves right. to be able to take on 
And that's a beautiful thing because the reality is when we, and I have clients tell me this all the time, I've never verbalized this before. It mm. felt so good just to say it. Yeah. So, of course, that's, you know, my skill is to have them trust the the session enough and me and themselves that they can verbalize that. But that takes time. You know, you don't have a first session all of a sudden. You're... Well, there's so many instruments now in today's world that we can hide behind. Oh, gosh. You know, the yeah. power of voice. Right. Right. But so, they, and, that's interesting, Tim. Yeah. No, it's not me giving advice. Well, it's I think me. that's, I, I'm not Kenya, not to always, <laughs> what is that word? You should never. Um, and it doesn't assume matter, or assume yeah <laughs> but i was assuming yeah um, with all that being said the tie-in to me now is is how do you what advice do you give to everybody and anybody to find that therapist perfect for you what how do you i don't know either yeah anyway, that's a great question i think yeah how do you go about finding a therapist mm -hmm. or the right one the right yeah the right one, one. Yeah. um well you certainly can google things i think in a small community um you know it depends upon whether or not you want to travel, not travel. You can find online. I'd say talk to friends. I would say a lot of times, again, people who I know who maybe don't want to come to me because they know me personally, I'll help them find someone. Mm -hmm. So anyone's welcome to call me. I'd be happy to have a free consult on the phone to talk about what is therapy, what to expect, what it might be able to do for you, not what type of therapist. You know, it could be male, female. It could be young, old. It could be someone in the recovering field. Sometimes they want a recovering person. I'm not a recovering person. So I could help them do that. Yeah, individualize. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. So I always think it's very, and I have a lot of resources because I've been doing this so many years, not only here, but Chicago, South Bend. You know, when I have someone who has an issue and if I'm not uh, the one for them, for whatever reason, I'll help them find that person. Because it is important, and I also think it's important, just like when you talk to someone on the phone, that you have some kind of even, you know, I would say, you know, say, um, oh, I'm thinking of going through a divorce, and I'd like someone who deals with couples. And uh, if you talk to someone on the phone and say, you know, generally speaking, what, what Mr. or Mrs. Therapist do you do for this type of issue? And they'll say something. And you should get some clue whether or not this is a good click or not. And there's nothing wrong with going to first first session. Say thank you very much, but no, thank you. For yeah, I think it's easy too. Not that I know, no, but I in other things, it is easy to see if they're scripted. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think that's an easy. You mean like yeah. you get a sense individual. from? Yeah, if I was a client, if I went to the a therapist, I I know I would see that they were scripted. They're gonna yeah. tell me what they just told the person before me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I do think that's easy identified yeah because everything you have set up to this is i love what you said i keep saying that <laughs> i love that you said i don't tell them oh never mm. well what what would they be <laughs> but I, i'm telling you it's assumed that i i think that i keep saying that but okay i'll move on guys sure <laughs> no it's good so Tim. with that being said we're talking about connecting yes and personalizing so let's talk about the field of drugs okay and um a lot of conversation including with my own inner uh family and friends is drugs masking the emotion or the problem? Is it band-aids versus solutions? So many people say that when they um, go to the hospital, the first thing they do oh. is offer a drug. You know, yeah, they don't go investigate and like, sure. So talk to me about drugs yeah. and the role in about mental drug. health. Yes. Yeah, Please. yeah. I would say. Um, and there are many schools of thought, and that's a very big, obviously, uh, particularly in this day and age, particularly with COVID, not to get off track, but um, alcoholism, substance abuse, drug addiction was, is, was and is on the rise because of COVID. The pressures that came with that, more and more people started drinking more, using drugs more, using you know prescription meds more. I think our society, if you ever saw the movie, oh my goodness, what was it, um, about the company that overprescribed from a marketing standpoint um, drugs, prescription drugs, and some doctors have the idea that they just want to fix the client's problem and make them not hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, of course, that ends up being a habit and an addiction. So to answer your question, Tim, is drugs appropriate? Are drugs appropriate? Are they not appropriate? It depends upon the person and the situation. In many cases, drugs, medication, 
is appropriate, but in the right dosage, in the right amount, and then sometimes as months and years pass, you need to switch the medication for whatever reason. In many cases, I think this is kind of your question, sometimes you don't need medication. Sometimes you can do things on your own. But I can tell you with depression, clinical depression, oftentimes you need medication because if you study it, there's the dopamine in the brain and the nerve endings. And if that's out of balance, we could have talk therapy every day and it wouldn't be able to be as effective if there's clinical depression and they physiologically, physiologically need medication. So medication can be used and it can be a, a wonderful thing. Mm. Does it answer your question? It sounds like you're saying it makes it, it might be the thing that makes it possible for you to do some of the other like talk therapy. Absolutely. Stuff. Okay. But it, again, Dan, it depends upon the person and the case. Mm -hmm. But our, is our world over medicated? Sure. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, sometimes that starts at a very young age. But Well, I even say to myself more than ever, to your point, not to make COVID our conversation, but in the last two years, it's been a heaviness. And oh, I mean, terrible! I in the in the brain, you know? right? I've yeah. been mentally completely right, dis right, yeah. And that is where just the fact that you just said that now, Tim, um, our society needs to say to the, ourselves, we've been through a lot, and not not a pity party. Woe is me. But to give ourselves space to say what's working well in my life, what is not working well in my life, no matter what society tells us we should be doing. For instance, I can tell you I deal with a lot of successful women who are in a transition, whether it's empty nest or they're changing careers or they're retiring. That's a shift in a belief system of what's important in my life right now. So in the heaviness of in these horrific shootings are going on. That affects, you know, I heard a siren. My son left the house the other day and I called him. I think he thought I was nuts. I said, <laughs> I heard the sirens. I'm just, you know, that's an intense anxiety that we didn't always have before. So the reality of what you're saying, Tim, is yes, we are on a heightened alert because of what's happening in our society. So um, that has an effect on us, both short-term and long-term. To recognize that and put the brakes on a little bit, and again, just to verbalize it sometimes with our loved ones. And You know, there's a lot of ways to get support. Therapy is one of them. But other people get support in a lot of different ways. So it's important that we acknowledge and respect our feelings. And some of those feelings around this time, uh, given the last few years, yeah. have been a little heavy. Yeah, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And I always make a joke, as you know, any of my clients, I try to make this light, but I, I just said this weekend with my partner, mm -hmm. I need, and it's not, we always think it's a weakness. Yeah. Which, and it's not, right. it's actually a strength. It's, it's a point. respect. Yeah, you got to respect your feelings. Yeah. See, and that's what we don't do enough. And that's not the me, me, be obnoxious, self-absorbed society. It's a reality mm -hmm. to say, yeah. gosh, I'm struggling with something. Well, we dump our plump. But I need to dump my brain. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I know about you else, but I had a heavy brain. <laughs> and I need to give myself or everyone yeah. gives herself permission just to. Right. It's like a little gerbil on one of yeah. those wheels. You need yeah. to jump off sometimes and say, whoop. <laughs> but that sometimes our um, unhealthy belief system is that we need to be producing and doing and going yeah. and achieving mm -hmm. and more money and more this and more taking care of everyone else but ourselves. And I do like that balance. We need to learn, you know. I'm old school work to your point. Everything you just said is me. And I need to, that's why I do need to learn from the young and go, you know, because they got it down to a science. They're not <laughs> going to be overloaded. Yeah. You know what I'm they want the balance. They want the vacations. Right. They want the time versus right. all that. So that's a good. We should, yeah. And on the spectrum, balance. but it's looking on the spectrum that works for you, Tim. Right. You know, your idea of relaxing is not maybe a 22 year old's idea of relaxing. So, it all depends upon what's right for you and taking the time and space and self-care and awareness to say, what do I, what's working in my life? What's not working in my life? And yeah. do I need to go to someone to maybe support me getting and clarifying and then helping me find my way? Right. Yeah. And it's to a, your point, the last two years, it, the conversations is shootings yeah. or oh. sickness. Yeah. 
Yeah. We all have been well, affected by that. It's kind of unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, the the divisive nature of all of the commentary about all of the stuff that's been going on, too, isn't any help either. That keeps us all yeah. on edge, no matter whose right. side you're on, if you're on a side, all that. Right, Dan. You know, social media can be an awful thing in the sense that we're always hearing yeah. all the good and bad and the ugly, and, and there's a lot of bad and ugly. Yeah, it seems and, to reward And it the, sells. Yeah, the whole system seems to reward the extremes and the and without the, a doubt oof, the yeah. horribleness and all that. Right. Well, but, and that, that gets that that goes to the whole our political system of like, can we yeah. be nice and just respect right. the people that have you know other side of the aisle opinions and talk to each other versus blame and hate and mud throwing it. Do you yeah. think the social media has changed the way that we use our brains in that way? Like, like I have the impression that what you just said, like the, the common ground and the things that we used to kind of rely on that even people who disagreed could, could respectfully, eventually, mm-hmm. respectfully have some kind of compromise or whatever. Mm-hmm. It seems like now everything is cast in such a way that you, you, you just spend so much time thinking, how could another person think what they're saying, you know, that I see or, or whatever. And it's like, you can't even relate. And yet if you're, intelligent enough you realize well that's exactly what they think about me too right. if you're on the other side like we're, we're just in this mode now or it's hard to see where the shared ground is and i don't know i kind of yeah. want to blame social media but i, I don't know <laughs> yeah that's an interesting point i'm not sure it's social media i think um i hesitate to say this but the political environment in the last five years have been a little rough yeah and I think um, mudslinging uh, uh, got to be uh, the nature of the beast, and that's not so good. Yeah. I think if our leaders, you go to any company, any organization, t- Tim, it's like you know, in your in your in your business. Right. I mean, it's a very kind, respectful place. Yeah. Well, that comes from the top. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, leaders set the ambiance. It, absolutely, yeah. politically and business and our communities. Just the attitude. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So to have patience with people who have a difference of opinion and not be I'm right, you're wrong, and, and try to listen respectfully and then come to a compromise. Yeah, that's the it's the right or wrong. That doesn't seem to be any gray area anymore. Right. And yeah. that's for all of us. We can all play a part in that. Yeah. Right. You know, wherever we are in society, whether at the gas station someone cuts it off, well, you know, give people a chance. Try to understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Move forward. Yeah. Well, I would say change the message. How's that? Yeah. What do you like mean? When people say, oh, they're mean, or I had bad service, lead that differently. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, I'm not, my takeaway is going to be I, you know, we, for my birthday, we went to Chicago and we haven't gone for a couple of years. And everyone's like, oh my God, why Chicago? It's so depressing. It's so this, so this, murders, this. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. it's my birthday. Right. I just <laughs> my own, you know what I'm saying? But I create right. my own. Yes. And that's good, yeah. Tim. So we just, to your point, we just need to do that instead of saying, they're this. You lead by your own example and change right. it. Life's a choice. Make it positive. Right. Make it whatever you want to do. Right. But if you're making it negative, you know, negative kind right. of follows negative. Maybe you weren't nice either. Right, Tim. And you just your positive view can have an impact on others. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, no, your does. family, but everyone you come in contact with. Yeah. When you, you talked about your experience, I mean, you yeah. obviously keep up this positive attitude yeah. all the time. You're always saying, you know, it, it rubs you the wrong way when somebody says, I feel like I'm getting a cold because it's like, right. yeah. You're going to get the cold. You know, you, you have the philosophy of what is in your head is going to start to shape what your experience is. Right. And I think that's I think that's insightful and wise. I don't think everybody has that. Talk but. about your wiles, not your woes. Right. Yeah. 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 right. Yeah. So speaking of talking about, let's talk about labels. And I'm not talking sure. about on clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let's, labels are like, what do you think about that? Let's, do you think labels identify a sense of belonging, like a connection with a group or another individual other than yourself. Um, like we talked earlier before we started this. So I have a drink every night mm-hmm. um, or not, but you know, I like a heavy drink or drinks. Um, so what, you know, so am I an alcoholic? Do I look at, should I like say, Tim, why do you have to? Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talk yeah about- that's a great question. I, I think again, like in therapy, it depends upon the person. You can have a drink every night and not be an alcoholic. The question is, but you can have drink once a year, and if it causes you problems, you might be an alcoholic. Well, so yeah. the the it, it again depends upon the person. And what I always say, uh, having worked for um, a substance abuse treatment center, and people would ask me a lot, you know, do I have a problem? Does my wife or husband have a problem? Do my my friend, 
Um, it depends upon the person. And if alcohol or whatever is causing problems in their life and they've s- tried to stop or slow down and they can't do it, they want to take a look at that. Mm-hmm. I am far from labeling. Absolutely not. Uh, it depends upon, again, what the person wants in their life. If it doesn't cause them a problem, I don't see that that's a problem. If it causes them a problem and they want to take a look at it, yay. And even if they take a look at it and some, you know, everyone has a difference of opinion about uh, alcohol and how much is appropriate and how not, what's not appropriate. It depends upon the client and what they want in their life. Mm-hmm. So... If they're concerned and they want to get it checked out, they can go and talk to someone or read about it or what, and then they can make a decision from there. Do I want to further investigate this or do I not? And if they further investigate it and they like what they're hearing, great. If they don't like what they're hearing, they still don't have to do anything about it. But maybe it plants a little seed that they can get some kind of more information, more support, hear about it more some other time in their life. So the question is really, what do they want? Is it causing a problem in their life? It's it not how it back much. around are, again to what, what they, what, what, I mean, it, it, you can almost say to them, you tell me, is it a, is it a problem or not? Right. Is it causing you a problem? And sometimes they don't know the answer to that. So then, right, right. then that's where therapy helps where you can say, right. well, w- what's okay with it? What's not okay with it? And talk about that. Well, sometimes that's a problem. Sometimes it's not. I'd like to do this or that. What's the cause and effect? And I always find this interesting, and I don't know the answer, and I'm sure you do, <laughs> but the ones that always throw out the labels. What, know, do what, like, what do you mean? What do you mean? My husband's always a shopaholic. My husband mm-hmm. always spends some money. My wife always has to shop, whatever. You don't say these labels. She's a shopaholic. Yeah. She's. And I think know, it. What d- does that mean? Well. What does that really mean? Um, if someone calls something someone, yeah. something, and they don't like that they're overdoing something, then maybe that's an issue they want to work on. You know, it's kind of like, let's better understand this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it, gosh, all the couples I deal with, um, I, you know, have the husband or wife will have a difference of opinion about anything, whether it be alcohol or sex or finances or what do we do with our leisure time so it's not really who's right or wrong it's what do you want to do about that and again just what you said dan in society it's it's respectfully listening to the other person's point of view and how do we compromise Mm -hmm. and understanding yeah but i think the best medicine for me i hope it's for everybody is communication Right, yeah. that's a great. I just didn't so, know, and right? Know, but see, can, yeah, and oftentimes, couples I can tell you, straight, gay, all different couples I deal with, when you talk about communication, that word and the process of and the doing of communication is very different. Some people think they're communicating when they're not really, and then it escalates to an argument. So, how do we respectfully communicate what we really mean? That's interesting. That's mm-hmm. where well, I like that. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. Well, that's where you get into the meat of things. And instead of having, you know, my wife always shops, oh, and, you know, 10, 15 years later, it's still a, an issue or, or a conflict between them. Like, let's look at that. Right. You know, why does, in or a man shops, um, you know, why does one or other who shops a lot, why do they do it? Why do they want to do it? Why do they see it's okay? And the opposing, if you would, partner, why is it not okay? Or And, blah, 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 blah. and what mm-hmm. does that mean? And, okay, how can we compromise? And what's really that? Because often that phrase is the devil's in the details. <laughs> you know, let's try to understand both sides. Not, you know, haranguing at each other, but how can we come to compromise? Mm -hmm. Because literally when, if you love someone, when we get down to the details of any particular issue, there's usually some goodwill that they both want to work on it and can compromise Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. come up with something that's pleasurable to both sides. Right. Well, it's very easy to quit. Oh. So even you saying, I'm a shopaholic, that means you still care. Mm-hmm. You're saying something, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I like that. Too. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you'd almost have to say if uh, if the sentiment isn't there on both sides, that if there's a way 
to make it okay for everybody. If, in other words, if somebody says it's only okay if I, if my way wins, mm. then you, you know what's the hope? I mean, <laughs> well, it could be a misread. You know, yeah. to know is to grow. It could be a whole misread. Why am I a shopaholic? Why do you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's the why, not the why. But yeah, yeah right. I think communication is the yeah, best. Communication, yeah, but that sure. communicating is oftentimes very difficult right. for some because yeah. it mm-hmm. fires up. Well, I'm very passionate and intense, so I always get. I don't like how you're saying it. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? Uh-huh. I'm like I'm just like I'm expressive. Okay, so then I try to go. I want to say this, and then that sounds you know, <laughs> right. snarky or not sincere. Right. So, but you're right. It's it's the how and sure because I do when I get something excited about. Right, and that may be difficult for people to hear things right. in that manner right. where you th- you're just excited, right. but for someone else, that's like whoa, they're back up versus listening to what I'm saying. Yes, and I get it because I understand. Right, how, but it's hard for me. I work on it all the time because when I when I have the chance to talk about anything, good, bad, or different, yes, I'm very. Yeah. Right. And see, Tim, that's an exact thing that I work on oftentimes with couples is modeling how to do that in a more productive way. Like mm-hmm. literally doing thought stopping, mm-hmm. taking a breath, thinking about really what do you want to say? What do you want to convey? What's the goal of that conversation? So if you do a little work prior to the conversation, it can really help your cause, so to speak. Yeah. And I really actually do work on that too. Like I'm doing even with you, I'm writing things down. But I have to get it out or I forget. Sure. You know what I'm yeah. Are you getting a little free therapy today here? Yeah, well, I'm get, I'm, Is that what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, hey, we all need a little help. So I like, let's go over this one more time because I think sure. this is important on how to get help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, um, you know, Google online, ask friends and family who they've gone to. You're certainly welcome to call me for a free consult. And uh, depending upon the issue, I can kind of steer you. If that's too scary for some people, I do think, um, you know, you can call social workers at a hospital or, you know, I would say in the phone book. No, not so much anymore. You know, <laughs> you, you look at uh, really Googling it and, um, you know, and, but Take the time to find a good fit. And that sometimes means, you know, there's tons of counseling centers in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, If you need, you know, specific, you know, you need a sex therapist that has experience in X, Y, Z. Well, you know, you can find that. It might need to be online because there's maybe no one local. But depending upon your issue, and it's the same thing with alcoholism. I mean, there's all different types of philosophies about how to go about that but there's a lot of different ways to get help i mean there's aa there's therapy there's treatment there's you know there's a lot of different things so depending upon the person you got to try to find the best fit for them and put solution as the power word versus problem you're mm-hmm. saying go mm-hmm. because you want a solution not because problem you know problems get that negative well we judge ourselves so hard. terribly and you know we all myself included all have challenges and it's not because we're not smart and bright it's the nature of how we grew up society habits lots of things so that's a great point tim um we have to try to be compassionate and loving to ourselves to say it's okay to admit we're struggling with something it's okay to ask for help Mm -hmm. even if you need to do it confidentially and it's okay to take the time to figure that out yeah Mm -hmm. that's Uh, a good message that's a great that's a great message yeah yeah Yeah, i have a mom who's like had a major light bulb moment when she says i need 15 minutes when i come home from work to diffuse in, in order to go into mom mode yeah and that's been a godsend for her so that's the being compassionate to ourselves and giving in our society of go, 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 yeah. the green light to say, okay, let's try to figure this out. And what do I need? And it doesn't have to be a vacation to Bahamas or, you know, a $200. <laughs> <Could be. laughs> ma- yeah, that'd be nice, Dan. <laughs> or a massage every week, which would be fabulous. But I'll Take that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But there are baby steps. Mm-hmm. And those can be very powerful. And half of it is just acknowledging and respecting our feelings, which are not right or wrong. But 
that we're saying to ourselves we're struggling with something. I like well, that example a lot. Yeah. Go, go, do, do. Otherwise, you're a failure or you're lazy. Right, right. That's what I was go, thinking go, about do, that do, example. Not, you know, right, not. and there's nothing wrong with go, go, do, do if you're balancing. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you're happy with go, go, do, do, more power to you. And if it's working, great. Who am I to judge? But if you're overextended and all of a sudden, or you're in a different time of your life when go, go, do, do, yeah. <laughs> you start to see you have other values and other priorities. Right. Sometimes my definition of vacation now is home. Yeah. Like I, went, I like to just be in my home. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I don't get to, you know, I get, I go and I come and I go and I come and right. I, I love to just, that would be my vacation. It's like your yeah. safe space. Yeah. Be with the yeah. dogs, yeah. my partner. Just That's nice. enjoy what he, that sounds great. What he's worked on. Yeah. So, but I love that example, Gina, because the, of, of somebody needing 15 minutes just to kind of, oh. you know, because that's an example that to me, I can see where a person might want that, but have guilt atto- oh. attached to that or have the sense that, you know, there's so many things to do when you get home. So how can I take 15 minutes? You know, all of that stuff. And if you sort of unwind all that right, and just Dan. get to the answer, <laughs> that's really powerful. It is powerful. And, and when we're struggling to admit, talk about, admit, say that might be nice, and then to talk to our partner and say, "What do you think about this?" Yeah, and you know, or your yeah. therapist. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Because like I, I like uh, I find that I do well when I do like mindfulness meditation. Oh yes. But what happens is when I don't do it, I get into this anxiety loop, and then in the short term, if I try to do it, it derails my day. So I don't because I avoid it and I avoid, it. and it's like you gotta you gotta have that insight to be able to say, look. I got to do this not for making me feel better right now so much as to get back on track. Long term. Yeah. 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 So, you know. Yeah. There's a model I use in life coaching with my life coaching clients where uh, the ability to change our thought about something, what you just said, taking for the example of 15 minutes and you get yeah. home. The thought is, oh, I can't do that. Versus a thought, if I do this, look what will happen. And then our feelings change and we feel heard and we feel justified Mm -hmm. and we feel good about ourselves. And then all of a sudden our actions will be different. And then the result is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say, an all tensed up evening because we didn't get our 10 minutes. Well, I love how you said before you talk, have the time to talk, to think about what you're going to talk about. Mm. That's very important to me. Again, I'm going. I'm, I am. You're right. I'm in therapy, <laughs> <laughs> but I do. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to spill it out. I don't have much time. I want. You know what I'm saying? I want to just spit it out. And maybe sometimes that works for you, Tim. Right. But if it doesn't, that's when you want to put the brakes on right. and say, as Dan says, give me my little quiet time in the morning and say, I want to talk to X, Y, Z this today about this issue. Well, how can I prep myself for that? Yeah. Okay, so Jean Ann Cannon, which I love your name. I always say Jean Ann Cannon. Um, how do we find you? Like, how does this oh, audience oh, find you? Oh, good. Um, uh, let me give you my cell, 219-878-0322. Um, having left uh, a wonderful organization recently, I'm in the midst of getting my website up. I am on Facebook. You can look for Jean Ann Cannon, but really calling me or texting me or emailing me would be fine. And it's Jean Ann Cannon at Comcast.net. And you've got an office right here in Michigan City. I have an office right on 7th I've Street. I've heard good things about this from people who have seen it. Yes. It's, like, yes. <laughs> it's a, a, a really uh, adorable, I think, uh, what was the word? Or it's very space. sweet. Very, and um, very cool. Yeah, thank you. It's very comfortable and quiet and confidential and very nice, yes. And remember, as she just gave a testimonial, don't ever be stuck in life. Oh. Be passionate. She followed her passion, and she's back doing her passion. She's the real deal, I can tell you that right now. And she's got great hair. <laughs> <laughs> At least a haircut, even when she kind of cuts it. <laughs> kind of cuts it herself. Uh, before we leave with Jan's last words, I want to lighten it up, and I'm going to tell you guys a joke. Oh boy! Did you guys hear that there is a dating site for potatoes? No. <laughs> yes, it's called Mash. dot com. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Look that one right up to. So, thank you so much for your time. It's valuable. I appreciate you. Oh. Thanks for being here. And you're going to leave us with. Oh, a fun little note. Um, follow us with your picture having your Tim Teeny to Timothy Jeffrey underscore MC and use hashtag Tim Teeny Time. Woo-hoo. And remember, every time we have a Tim Teeny, you 
don't have to have therapy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's your therapy. There you go. Or alcohol. It, or alcohol. <laughs> there you go. It's been an absolute delight. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much, nice Dan. 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 Open opened up a lot, including us here. Absolutely. Um, a great, comfortable conversation. And a lot. Thank you for letting the, us know the no. Absolutely. Of assumptions. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and it, really, the bottom line is, if you're struggling, reach out. And, and ask and talk and learn and you're not alone you're, you're not alone important. and you don't have to stay stuck and it's you so exciting that that's what I love what I do that's so uplifting because uh, there are answers out there t-shirts so we can sell those he stuff. always got the spin on things yeah. <laughs> <laughs> merchandise don't stay stuck <laughs> I love it I love it alright until next time enjoy so, your Tim Teeny woo-hoo. thank you for enjoying us All right. thank you Talks with Tim Tim Talks. Amazing.